we go. So here we go. <laughs> Game's loading. Welcome here, whoever's here already. Yeah, we cannot leave this un unfinished. I also want to go for a little bit of Stellaris or try out the new Rim World maybe on stream. But yeah, I cannot let a thing unfinished, right? It's just too fun to do that. So let's hope I have a construction site near. Hey there, Mile a Minute, welcome back. A construction site nearby, and they just stopped doing the heavy work, so I hope. It's relatively late, so I hope it's. Um, they already finished for today. So that would be a good opportunity. Hmm. See, is everything set up? Yeah, nice, 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 nice. Everything's set up. Chat does work. Hello there. Yeah, we'll just continue. Let's see. Um, uh, the dinosaur tribes seem to have it hard at the moment. <laughs> so let's get them going for a bit. Hmm, resource scarcity. Oh, let's give them some more resources. Then. Dinosaur textile artworks represent harmony. Now let's get an overview, right? So we have the dinosaur tribes. Stone Age on Earth. Um, they're currently growing massively, so it's crazy. Well, let me get my... Ah, yeah. So this doesn't change when we when I get in. Then we have the drowned dog domains. <laughs> That's hilarious, right? That's also the unbalanced life form. They've already uh, progressed to the Iron Age. They have very high potential war casualties, so if there's a war, they will have extinction events. And with the Dorloth, and they, yeah, they are, they are doing fine in the Industrial Age, as you can see here. Everything relatively fine. I mean, the the war casualties could be better, but yeah, it is as it is. So. Let's go on with the, with the dinosaurs, and for this one, I want to be a little more careful. So, get a little bit more of the synthesis points together. Hey, we have a knowledge event. Hey there, Simon Bolin. Sage chieftains. The tribes of the dinosaurs tend to be led by sages and wise folk, because their historical knowledge and their connection to spirit and the lands of earth are seen as vital qualities. Motivated by a desire to perpetuate the sacred dance of life for many generations beyond their own, these leaders observe, reflect and make decisions based on experiential wisdom and unwavering intuition. Hey there, Anderson. <laughs> then good morning, Anderson Cower. Nice to have you here. So we can make we can make the civilization pillar. The wise chieftains persistently lead their people towards harmony, enriching their lives by awakening consciousness and celebrating diversity for 20 points, and have the regular development for 0 points. With a keen understanding of dinosaur nature and past events, the wise tribal leaders calmly sidestep the destructive paths that their predecessors may have followed out of fear or uncertainty, or we could go for the dead end. Some of the mysterious sages turn out to be out of fix and are quickly replaced with more practical-minded leaders. Gain the people's trust, subsequent chiefs distance themselves from spiritual practices, thus closing the doors to ancient wisdom. I have two times pillar. No, no one, no one has come, no one is extinct. Everyone's there. The alien dinos are also there. No one extinct. So, we have two times pillar. I think we'll just go for pillar. It's relatively cheap too. Yeah, Anderson is also on board. Nice. 
Sage chieftains of Earth helped uh, their culture develop values not only promoting individuals or tribes, but rather those that strengthened the bond between all the living things. Through drum circles and singing ceremonies, they guided communities to shared experiences of love, joy, and unity. t love, joy, and unity, singing together. <laughs> The T Rexes. Nice to have you here. I don't care if you're sleepy or not. You're you're good. You're good. Uh, let's stop their growth a little bit. <laughs> Seventeen million is a little bit much for Stone Age, but it's no longer Stone Age. Yeah, the T Rex drums with their <laughs> they have very tiny drums because their arms are so short, right? In the Bronze Age, the dinosaurs began testing the limits of their planet's generosity by cultivating crops, raising animals for food, and clearing forests in order to build primitive cities. Early mining and metalworking skills allow them to craft better drums, weapons, and tools, and they learn how to document knowledge via written language. Here we go. We can go for wisdom. The dinosaurs apply their newfound knowledge and communication skills. Societal improvements in the budding disciplines of medicine, law, philosophy and drum music. Advancement. New techniques and tools allow the dinosaurs to explore new areas, preserve their natural resources, and develop early infrastructure or power. Defense becomes increasingly necessary at this dinosaurs begin exerting more power over one another and hunting bands evolve into primitive armies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Armed dinosaurs. So we have one, one voice for wisdom. What do your others say? Wisdom as well. Advancement. Advancement is could could work out, but it's risky. They need the resources, but they will also get more pop growth. So power. So we have one time power, one time advance, and one time wisdom. And I need to find my dice. Maybe the dice in the Discord. Okay, okay, I'm rolling the dice in the Discord. Because I haven't found my physical D3. My three-sided dice. It's one, one, meaning wisdom. Here we go. Going for wisdom. Heavy investment in the T-Rexes. Because fertility rituals, what? Nah, that, that doesn't have anything to do with the decision. Oh, here we go. Bronze Age technology provides the dinosaurs access to minerals on the surface of Earth. Devastating flood drowns many dinosaurs, and the drowned dog domains also doing something. Depopulation in Tau City. Poor hygiene, the rise of cities on Tau City 3, and the crowded living conditions in these new urban centers led to the spread of diseases and infections due to their unawareness. The benefits of proper cleaning, washing, and sanitation, many drowned die an early death. And it's not through drowning. We could prevent it. Scholars watch cut, catch a whiff on the connection between uncleanliness and disease. They educate their fellow drowned and convince their leaders of the importance of proper waste management. Regular development? The death rate in grimy urban centers is high and the drowned tend to settle in rural areas where their population numbers slowly fall. Massive depopulation. The drowned are unwilling or unable to fight their own uncleanliness. Filth and excrement spread diseases in cities. Lifespans are short and bodies are covered in abscesses. Oh. <laughs> so we have two times regular. So, off with the urban centers. Here we go. Regular development. 
They would know where to flush the waste of their growing civilization. City dwellers wound up drowning in squalor. Parasites infested their garments. And living quarters and their bodies were so disease-ridden it wasn't even humorous. An event known as the Great Stink spawned many drowned to vacate urban centers. Oh god. <laughs> stinky, stinky. They compose an epic poem recounting their history. But they found a promising new mountain city. They mourn the death of a beloved sovereign and mm, conflict between two dog domains is settled peacefully. The writers inspire the drowned to live peacefully. Live peacefully. Yeah, we could. Drowned ballads represent harmony. Okay. Harmony is nice. Yeah, they need another flood. <laughs> what are the Doloth sages up to? Extinction event. Okay, of course. The factories of deadly fumes. The factories of the Doloth need to burn toxic materials to produce energy. The long term effects of the poisonous industrial smoke are unknown. Waste materials will enter the food chain and risk contaminating the whole population. Microplastics. For microplastics, it could be a close call. Influential Dorval scientists discover terrifying long-term effects and enforce a global ban on the burning of toxic materials. Minimal survivors, 21.7 million dollars lives lost. It takes a long time to fully recognize the effect of the toxic fumes. Entire city populations fall victim to the self-made poison. Only a few rural societies without any industries survive the crisis unharmed. Complete extinction. Rigel 7 gets filled with factories and even after fast rising mortality rates more highly toxic materials are burned. The global water supply is completely contaminated and the entire Doloth population Perishes. Minimal survivors. Revenge for the pig orcs. <laughs> okay, nice. <laughs> we have two times minimal survivors. We'll, we'll go for that. <coughs> they pay for their pollution. Here we go. Many old abandoned factory cities can be found on Rital 7. The primitive industry produced so much highly toxic waste that the urban population perished. Only a few rural communities without any industry survived. Oh god, the war casualties. <laughs> oh, the technology of the industrialization give the Dorloth access to fossil fuels. Nice! <laughs> they created a new style of architecture and redefined the shape of their constructions. Let's get. This. Let's try to save this, but it's. They created a new style of architecture again. Here we go. Conflict is settled peacefully. The dinosaur sage Ecclesias. They pay for the intel being the intelligent race and not the peacocks. Okay, all right. <laughs> they reach the Iron Age. Yeah, the volcanic gods, or the poison gods or something. The Iron Age. Empires and trading states rise to power in the Iron Age. The metalworking dinosaurs forge tools and develop the skills needed to create simple machinery, while expanding theological discourse could provide them with a sense of purpose and a moral compass. Organized religion also has the potential to bring about great atrocities. Ooh. They could not choose wisdom this time. Only advancement. The dinosaurs produce mighty blades by mining and smelting resources from deep within Earth, and new construction techniques accelerate their city building. They're building dinosaur fortress power. In epic dynasty wars, dinosaurs iterate siege weaponry against the well fortified castles of their foes. So, advancement or power? I mean, power gives us some points, but two points is a little bit. Gameplay, it's <laughs> crazy. So we're going for advancement again. Nice. Ah, I mean, 318 years. The dinosaurs advance. Yeah, it's more years we have to live. 
with them. Try to get that under control. Advancement. Everybody's on board. The drowned dog domains. A great war threatens Tau City. Oh yeah, why not? The Holy Crusades. A dominant religious faction of the drowned is claiming the right to invade a distant holy land. They gather many allies to challenge the alleged heathens who live in the divine country of Tau City 3. Armies of volunteer peasants and honor-bound knights swelling with pious pride and bearing sacred symbols on their banners and armor thus embark on a glorious pilgrimage. <laughs> Already with the absolute power. <laughs> it's only total war, so we can have peace for free, regular conflict or total war. Peace. The holy people of different faiths meet in a great council and negotiate an end to the crusade with a universal doctrine of peaceful coexistence. After many or the regular conflict, after many years the invaders are repelled and return home empty-handed. The long crusade costs many lives. The usage of well poisonings during this war will wipe out the entire population. Total war. The battles over the Holy Land never end. Many religious splinter factions emerge from the fringes and reconquer the land from the previous crusaders, except there's no one who will be alive. The deployment of countless well poisonings destroys all Maru and their entire environment. The planet becomes uninhabitable after that. So everybody's for peace this time. Hey there, George Bennett. Welcome here. Welcome again. So we're going for peace. Invasions in the form of religious crusades were halted when the drowned discovered a pan-denominational relic providing that all faiths had legitimate ties to the Holy Land. The relic was put on display in the disputed domain whose jurisdiction then shifted between churches in a fairly negotiated rotating schedule. <coughs> Yeah, indeed, it would cause extinction sometimes. Because of that, as you can see here, potential war casualties are 147%, which means a war is a possible extinction event. <coughs> and a really big war will also make the planet in uninhabitable because of the weaponry they have available. <coughs> which is why I try to always bring that down. <laughs> so we have a bit, little bit of wriggle room Yeah, we're trying to, we're trying to, but we're not getting the, the right events because, yeah, we get a little bit majority of negative events because of dystopia. But there's also some fun events when you have full utopia, then you can have cult events, and these are absolutely disastrous. So if you fill up dystopia to like 70-80%, it's also dangerous again. The Maru is, I think, yeah, the second most advanced. The Dorloth. We come back to the Dorloth. Growth in Rigel. Vaccine production. Vaccines for the world's deadliest diseases have been developed. Scientists urge the leaders of Rigel 7 to mass produce and freely distribute these vaccines worldwide, potentially eradicating infectious diseases. You could make it a civilization pillar, which they would really need. It could be useful. Vaccination becomes a global effort and the formulae are shared freely. Infectious diseases are a thing of the past for the dawn of more regular development. Also good. From gameplay, increased production of vaccine vaccines leads to gradual progress toward eliminating disease on Rital 7 or a dead end. Vaccines become propriety and expensive, forcing some Dorloth to make bootleg vaccines. vaccines. This prompts suspicion and an anti-vaccination movement develops. So we have pillar, we have regular. Gotta wait a tad for another one to weigh in or to to force me to a dice roll. The doctors and healers. The plant doctors. The herb becomes the herbalist or something like that. <laughs> A 
herbalist named Herbert. So we <laughs> we have two times pillar, one times regular, and one times dead end. So it's gonna be a pillar. <laughs> Due to a concentrated global vaccination effort, the Dolwolf have eradicated the most common infectious diseases on Rigel 7. Ah, then we would have had a toss-up, but now <laughs> it went to the pillar. I'm sorry. Here we go. There will be many more decisions. As you can see, these people can wipe themselves out very easily. Establish a new sage community. Hey there, Lawrence de Pre Preter. Um, I did that as a kid and I have an uncle who does it and I sometimes go there and watch with him. And he's starting to get old, but he's a very young uncle, so I'm also not that young anymore. And I indeed, I like at least I, I read I read sometimes things about the night skies, right? The skies and everything like that. I sometimes watch he's called Petrov on YouTube. And he he makes quite nice videos about uh, astrophysics. It's always very entertaining. And so interesting, like crazy. And I like to watch the night skies, really, but I now live in an area where I don't really see much of the night sky, unfortunately, because it's so urban. <laughs> Dinosaur Sage Kingdoms, the power in soul. Great siege engines. The dinosaurs design complex siege engines. These hulking giants can hurl simple projectiles over long distances, plunge through city walls, and circumvent all other fortifications. Uh, we could not prevent it. We can go for regular development. The dinosaurs build an arsenal of great siege engines, which often turn the tides of war. The T Rex trebuchets. Absolute power. The dinosaur pursuit of siege engine technology grows obsessive with devastating effects on Earth settlements. No, no, it's the dinosaurs. The, the Maru? I don't know if the Maru did siege engines. Oh, from London, yeah. <laughs> that would be crazy. I mean, I see, I see some stars at least. But it's. Yeah, it's uncomparable to where I lived before. So we have regular, regular, regular. And one times absolute, of course. Here we go. In the Iron Age, the dinosaurs became expert builders of mechanical siege engines. Though these machines were crude at first, the breakthrough in the use of counterweights significantly improved their range. Soon they led waste to the fortifications built by enemy dinosaurs and struck fear into their armies. Hmm. Let's make it a little bit more utopian, maybe. <laughs> and we need some resources, Styly. Oh, God. <laughs> Battle of an important dinosaur city is won by an army of sword fighters. And, of course, uh, T-Rex trebuchets, right? Happened now. Oh. <laughs> Here we go again. Advances in architecture inspire redesign of their cities. Stars are no more than pinpricks in the firmament. Firmament. Hey. Dinosaur alchemists establish new resource management metho methods, and they need to. And they need to. Enlightenment in Tau City, the holy, the holy city, a city that is rumored to have sacred power, starts drawing spiritualists, priests, and sages from all corners of Tau City Three. We could make it a civilization pillar. The holy city becomes a center of spiritual and philosoph philosophical debate, 
Countless scriptures are created to spread the wisdom to all drowned on Tau City 3. This is the second most advanced. Regular development? The dominant religion of the drowned claims the holy city for itself. The teachings of the city's writers are absorbed in the, into the church doctrine. Or a dead end, the drowned start to worship the city itself and not the teachings of the inhabitants. Salads conquer the place and slowly the city loses its appeal to the masses. It's definitely a very cool event. Makes, makes you think of like the Library of Alexandria or something like that. So we have Civ Pillar. To this day, the ancient holy city is still the spiritual center of Tau City 3. The drowned are expected to visit this city at least once in their lifetime to take part in extended worshipping rituals at specific locations throughout the city. Many save up all their life for this trip. A beautiful thought. Will the sea of Tau City 3 rise again and destroy our mountain cities? Indeed, good question. Conflict is settled peacefully, and they created a new style of architecture. Redefined the shape of their constructions. Will the sea rise again? This powerful dog domain falls on Tau City 3. They're called dog domains because they have like, like, like dog riders or something like that. Apparently they live in mountains. Or at least sometimes they live in mountains. They established a new domain and the Dorloth have... Oh, Rigel is sending signals into space. Radio test. Dorloth tests the capacity of the new radio technology, unaware that some of these cryptic radio waves may reach far away alien civilizations in the future. Could give it a signal boost. All over Rigel 7, Dorloth engineers transmit powerful radio signals in all directions. A regular signal, a strong radio signal with nonsense messages like 1, 2, 3 or test, test, test is focused. The Tau City system. For silence, the frequencies of the test signals are erratic and no notable signal was sent out into space. So we have one times silence. Are there more votes? Hmm. Nautical age with a fear of the ocean. Yeah. <laughs> they, they need to invent planes, apparently. Regular once, silence twice. The sounds of silence. Going for the sounds of silence. <laughs> Maru write T-Rex is into the battle while their pterodactyl doggos attack their enemies. Indeed, that is... <laughs> that should be in RimWorld too, <laughs> somehow. <sighs> Very cool. Ah, well, it seems like Silence is winning. Yeah, Silence. Riding Mosasaurs, oh yeah. So no notable signal was sent out into space. Here we go. They enjoy a new style of enchanting country music albums. So we have country... <laughs> country plants. Goodness me. Uh, here we go. The Doloth. How do they drink? Uh, they're drinking with their roots, I think. A new line of simple rifles was manufactured. Oh god. Ah. Hey, hey, hey! We, are, we don't have total extinction in the war anymore. <laughs> yeah, maybe with their leaves from rain. The dinosaurs have a development event. Consumption in salt. They should have problems with their food again. The hunting guilds, yeah. Due to sophisticated traps and bows, the hunting of wild animals becomes much easier. Being a hunter turns into a lucrative profession. The guild system is formed in the big cities of Earth. 
Let's see. We could and should prevent it <laughs> once it's over. <laughs> the hunting um, guilds turn into a breeding ground for assassins and mercenaries. They qu quickly become outlawed. Regular development. Hunting rights are reserved only for the sage monarchs of the dinosaurs. They employ the expertise of the hunting guilds to decimate the wildlife around their palaces. And massive consumption. The hunting guilds rise to power in dinosaur society and the hunters become reputable sage monarchs, even after eradicating most wildlife around the cities. Save the dinos! Yeah, it will be hard work, but we maybe we can do it. <laughs> I think we'll focus on them <laughs> for a bit, because they're <laughs> royally in a in a in an extremely bad position. What are other voices? I mean, we could go massive consumption and then we can let them extinct for points. <laughs> but that's terrible, right? We, we want to play story. It could matter. I mean, we, we could definitely do it. I think there will be an, an event that reduces the population very much. Probably coming. And if we take that, like minimal survival, probably something like that. And we can slowly build up again. <laughs> With less pop growth. <laughs> so it could it could really matter. Cannot plan it out all out. So prevention, prevention. Two times prevention. I'm going prevention now, I think. For the assassins. There are many dinosaur folk tales about cruel hunters that kidnap and murder common folk. The most heard story is that of the raging hunt in which hunters go out on a killing rampage riding on demon beasts led by the master of celestial spheres. Hmm. Ah. Resource crisis, here we go. A Witcher reference. Scarcity crisis in Sol. Wood scarcity. Forest areas are becoming scarce in the Sol system. The effects of inert consumption brought the dinosaur civilization to a breaking point. While they're dealing with the resource scarcity, will the Sage Kingdoms find ways to prevent the complete exhaustion of their environment? Or will they turn against each other? It's a critical point. We could go to war. 70 million casualties which would destroy more of our resources the dinosaurs pick up their iron swords and fight over access to the remaining forest areas night regiments destroy entire cities in the so-called wood wars wood scarcity scarcity causes discord and competition among the dinosaurs knowledge diminishes while the sage kingdoms of Sol compete for the dwindling resources or precaution, which game we cannot do. So, hmm. <laughs> you were the chosen one. So, we can roll for, for the crisis. Yeah, I mean, precaution can be less costly, but... Crisis or war? Two times the crisis. Crisis, crisis, crisis. Who would think that T-Rexes would wage war against each other? Light, right, right. I mean, it's probably the siege engines, right? So, here we go. Hostility in Seoul. With wood becoming rare, the dinosaur sage kingdoms are preparing for the worst and protecting the vanishing resources. Sword fighters are deployed next to vital metal mines, and the inhabitants of Sol are too busy preparing for conflict to take the root of the scarcity crisis. Hmm, that doesn't sound too great. <laughs> so let's see what we can get going. Total war with more resource losses. With 51 million casualties. The wood crisis escalates in no time. Sword fighters fight aggressively over access to metal mines, and night regiments destroy entire cities. The dinosaur civilization sinks deeper and deeper. 
Strong hostility. Night regiments protect the few remaining forest areas at all costs. While Sage Kingdoms prepare for conflict, Skodas turn into sword fighters, abandoning knowledge in exchange for iron swords. Regular hostility. Some Sage Kingdoms gather their sword fighters near vital metal mines as a scarcity of wood leads to the abandonment of Skodas. So we have regular. Regular, regular. They have just very, <laughs> very tiny swords. <laughs> I don't know, but they're maybe very sharp. Uh, or maybe they use the swords to... Uh, in their siege engines. Maybe it's, it's big giant swords that they propel forward with their siege engines. Like slashing entire armies apart. Who knows, right? Um, I mean, they're not effect that effective in weapons technology, as you can see here. Potential casualties for a war is very, very low. Well, we'll go for regular or strong hostility. The Iron Age wood crisis hit the dinosaurs hard. Their kingdoms assembled many regiments to protect the few areas left in solid all costs. Focus led to the loss of vital scholars. Yeah, it's it's uh, <laughs> it's ticking down on us. It's ticking down. Hard times are coming, but now we have the <laughs> Drowned Dogs paradigm shift in Tau City. Mandate of Heaven. In a region of Tau City 3, the Drowned believe that their sovereigns are chosen by the gods to rule over them. A powerful dynasty arises and establishes a celestial domain. But it is told that the will of Heaven can be revoked if the rulers displease the gods. can go for cultural expansion, but with a loss of resources, the Celestial Empire expands all over Tau City 3. The belief that their domain would reach everything under the sky leads to an exploration and many new mountain cities or cultural descent. If a sovereign is defeated in battle, they lose the mandate of the gods, so the throne could be contested by anyone with enough drowned power. Cultural expansion. Okay, here we go. The Mandate of Heaven. An ever-expanding land region was under the control of a celestial empire for many orbital cycles of Tau City III. The dominant drowned religion included a doctrine giving certain divine emperors a divine right to rule, as it was the will of the celestial gods. Now establish a new celestial empire. Once powerful Celestial Empire falls. And we have a new evolution event. Interesting. On Gleaser Sea. A new civilization is born. A life form on Gleaser Sea started making simple tools and developed a rudimentary language. But which species will form a Stone Age civilization in the Gleaser system? Come on. Here we go. Could go for the balanced species, the prune, peaceful observers. These gentle herds of four-eyed horse like humano humanoids roam the wide rock deserts. Standard species, the rao, aggressive and solitary, these naturally armored creatures inhabit barren wastelands. Or unbalanced species, the ka, always hungry and merciless, these nightmarish avian creatures rule the skies. The dinos, we'll return to the dinos, but... And for now we have these. Gleaser, red dwarf stars orbited by the desert planet Gleaser Sea and various rocky planets. The iron oxide in the atmosphere gives the rocky desert of the planet Gleaser Sea a distinct reddish color. All animals on the planet's surface carry additional water reservoirs in specialized organs so they can survive in the desert. 
Huge hypersaline lakes divide the land regions and between their salt crystal shores vast forests of transparent flower trees are flourishing. Four-eyed horsemen. Balanced, balanced, balanced. We have... Yeah, the birds. <laughs> the four-eyed horsemen are also cool. But I think we have we have the row now. They look like a swarm, right? Here we go. Starting in the Stone Age, the Rao civilization is born. And if you think we should really look for the dinosaurs, you're not wrong. We could lose them otherwise, so we'll make an exception to the rule. And bring them to our attention because the resources will be a... Yeah, but <laughs> Dolos Sage communities have the Great War threatening Rigel. World War. Di diplomatic and military escalations between powerful factions on Rigel 7 erupt into total war. As allies from all over the balance. Oh my goodness! Ah, I'm sorry. I oh. oh god! I always think balance is the middle ground. I'm sorry. My goodness. Not enough. Not enough coffee. As allies from all over the planet become entangled in the struggle, the heavily industrialized war spans multiple continents with battles fought in many theaters on land and sea. I would totally load, but we cannot really load, so... We have peace. Fearing that the entire planet will be drawn into bloodshed and misery, the feuding Doloth sage leaders meet and agree to a worldwide peace treaty. The World War. Besieged farming, forming settlements are burned to the ground and hunger plagues the planet. The war grinds on for many years until one side finally capitulates. A total war destroys everything. Cannot be settled anymore. No faction is able to get the upper hand. The battlefronts seem immovable and staggering numbers of armed farmers are sent to their deaths. One times peace, one times total war. Ah, you also wanted the middle option. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's really irritating. With balance, you, you always think of the middle ground, right? That happened to me too. <laughs> so, we have peace, we have... Total war. Let the plants catch fire. Dump plants. Total war. Total war. You... Okay, we'll go total war. No problem with that. <laughs> Good night, plants. Nobody likes the plants. It's total war. This planet was once inhabited by a species called the Doloth. Rigel, a blue supergiant star, is orbited by the ice planet Rigel 7 and three smaller stars in proximity. After the fact the factions of the Doloth started a global world war over all over Rigel 7, their civilization collapsed and the Doloth all perished. So let's let's return and guard the, the dinosaurs again. Right, here we go. <laughs> but let's represent harmony on Earth. They manipulate them for personal gain. Ooh. The dinosaurs compose an epic poem recounting their history. Ballads represent harmony on Earth. Yeah, hopefully, uh, forest harmony, right? Celestial dynasty shall rule the skies. We have another development event. Knowledge. Logic formation. The dinosaur society gathers in huge formations to perform complex calculations. Each individual calculates a simple evaluation and passes the result to 
the neighbor and through th tremendous coordination the dinosaurs are now able to solve problems with organic computing. They're yeah, organic computers. We can make it a civilization pillar. They perform their logic formations every day. Access to these organic computing techniques becomes crucial for the whole society. Regular development, the coordination required for logic formation limits their use. Dinosaur society to only the most difficult calculations. Dead end. Lack of discipline, coordination, blunders and sabotage render the logic formations useless. Unable to use them properly cal to properly calculate, the concept is abandoned. Civ pillar? Yeah. T-Rex mathematics. Here we go. We'll flee to the next age. They are now the formation sage kingdoms. Definitely. It's like the hive mind. We are in a new technological age. Let's see if this will save us. The dinosaurs are in the nautical age. The formation developed vessels capable of exploring the farthest corners of their planet. The flourishing traffic of goods and ideas advances the fields of navigation, chemistry and engineering. While rough pirates sail the sea regions of Earth, universities house printed books, safeguarding the accumulated knowledge of formation of civilization. Go for wisdom. The discovery of new lands and peoples inspires the formation to re-examine social and scientific pr principles. Advancement. <laughs> Exploration encourages the formation to engineer larger vessels and better food preservation to keep up with the demands of global trade. Power. Formation craft new weapons to conquer, plunder and wage war on each other. Advance. Advance, advance. We have two times advance. One more. Or two more. Voices. Yeah, the Maru were, were not the first. Were, were they the first species? I'm not sure. But the dinosaurs came later, I, sh I think. So advancement. Sage chieftains of Earth help their culture develop values not only promoting individuals or tribes, but rather those that strengthen the bond between all living things. Ah, we have the drum, drum cycles again. I'm sorry. Wow. And I have got a knot in my tongue. Oh, they're growing again. <laughs> on the growth. <laughs> Formation landscape has established a new re new resource management methods. Nice. The drowned have a development event. Depopulation. Here we go. Chastity culture. A culture devaluing chastity and celibacy spreads among the drowned. Sexuality becomes associated with obscenity, sinfulness and immorality. And those that are outed as sexual beings are ostracized. As a result, birthrights decline on Tau City 3. We could prevent it, while many drowned flaunted their virtue in public. Behind those closed doors they remained as promiscuous as ever. Regular development for an exorbitant price. Chastity culture dominates Tower City 3 and drowned begin to value sexual purity above all else. To counter the population crisis, exceptions for traditional sanctioned relationships are allowed. Chastity culture. The population of Tor City 3 plunges, the drive to shun the sexually active and maintain virginity within drowned society leads to a negative birth rate. Massive depopulation. <laughs> they could survive it. Massive, massive. Double massive. Okay, all right. Prevention. Okay, we have two times massive, one time prevention. T 
T-Rex was also in America, yes. Um, but I think T-Rexes were found all over the world. I think in... How was that valley called? Oh. Like at the border to Canada, there's some kind of valley and I think T-Rexes were found there, but I could be wrong. I have no exact knowledge of that. So we have massive depopulation coming. The drowned became a civilization of virgins. The dwindling population disapproved of any kind of sexual reproduction or enjoyment and maintains chastity above all else. Created a new style of architecture. The drowned found a promising mountain city. Will the sea of Tor City rise again and destroy our mountain cities? Drowned sword fighters lay down their iron swords and abandon the art of war. Hell Creek, yeah, that was. That was the one. Hell Creek. Once powerful celestial empire falls. Mourn the death of a beloved divine emperor. The drowned also reach the nautical age. The drowned develop vessels capable of exploring the farthest corners of their planet. The flourishing traffic of goods and ideas advances the fields of navigation, chemistry and engineering. While rough pirates sail the sunken cities of Tau City 3, and universities house printed books, safeguarding the accumulated knowledge of drowned civilization. Could go for wisdom. The discovery of new lands and peoples inspires the drowned to examine social and scientific principles. Advancement. Exploration encourages the drowned to engineer larger vessels and better food preservation to keep up with the demands of global trade. Power. The drowned craft new weapons to conquer, plunder and wage war on each other. So wisdom is for free this time. Advancement costs 20 points and power brings us 20 points. It's America versus China. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> well, go on with your jokes. It's already demonetized because of I don't know what. Because of I have to say extinction so many times in this game. I think. Mm. Wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. Here we go. Nautical Age technology gives them access to minerals. An ever-expanding land region was under the control of a celestial empire for many orbital cycles. The dominant drowned included a doctrine giving certain divine senators the divine right to rule, as it was the will of the celestial gods. Now we have the Rao. The unwanted Rao that I took, I'm sorry, injustice in Gliese. We could make them totally dystopian if you want. <laughs> As a revenge. <laughs> Maru is a celestial dynasty, like the Chinese were. Yeah, absolutely. Forbidden textile artworks. Textile artworks start depicting the brutal injustices of the Rao tribes, but chieftains don't want such art to inspire critical thinking of the fraudulent foundations of tyranny. The work of transgressive weavers is already being censored and banned. could prevent this. They ban dangerous weavers, but dedicated fans heed their messagery regardless. Regular developments? Chieftains secretly promote the textile artworks of phony rebels. The new controlled opposition abnormalizes dissent while appearing to do the opposite. Massive injustice. Tribes declare that all textile artworks must be seized as an urgent matter of safety for all Rao. <laughs> <sighs> Uh, maybe ordered by Rao Zedong or something like that. <laughs> hmm. I think the extremes are the best choices here. We want prevention, massive injustice, or regular development. 
about the dinos. Should we return to the dinos? <laughs> so we have prevention one time. Prevent, prevent. We'll prevent. There we go. Massive injustice once, prevent and two times. We prevented the thing. Subversive weavers could rely on the respect of local communities to sustain artistic vision. So the textile artwork circulated widely in the underground. Typically, tribe-approved textile artworks were ignored, except a few satirical works which cleverly sidestepped the censors. Okay, then with a wish we should return to the dinosaurs. The formation ones, right? Here we go. And we'll do that, here we go. The dinosaurs. Because of their resource scarcity. Rao detected the Bronze Age. Ah, developed the Bronze Age. In the Bronze Age, the Rao begin testing the limits of their planet's generosity by cultivating crops, raising animals for food, and clearing forests in, the or in order to build primitive cities. Early mining and metalworking skills allow them to craft better weapons and tools. And they learn how to document knowledge via written language. Go for wisdom. The Rao apply their newfound knowledge and communication skills to societal improvements in the budding disciplines of medicine, law and philosophy. Advancement. New techniques and tools allow the Rao to explore new areas, preserve their natural resources and develop early infrastructure. Defense. With power, defense becomes increasingly necessary as the Rao begin exerting more power over one another and hunting bands evolve into primitive armies. Do you want wisdom advancement or power i mean we could make them suffer because i chose them wrong might as well or we could also develop them so one time power two times power So close to taking power already. Going to the Tower of Power. Here we go. We powered through. Now let's save the dinosaurs again. <laughs> Hopefully. Oh yes, bring the growth down, please. Uh, um, let's get more war casualties <laughs> in case of a war. A new Galleon fleet is formed on Earth. Development event. Reduction installed. That sounds like something. Telegraphic network, though. A telegraphic network spanning the entirety of Earth is invented. This eases communication and makes it less necessary for the formation to travel. A celestial star. Civilization pillar. <laughs> Due to the nifty telegraphic network, the formation stop traveling altogether and stay in their capitals. Regular development. There are some corners of Earth that the telegraphic network cannot reach. These areas stay part of a smaller network of harbors. Dead end. The telegraphic system is rolled out and maintained by the sage territories who use it to manipulate messages and deceive the formation. Pillar gives us most. Uh, most resources, of course. Pillar. Save the dinos. Okay, okay. Let's save the dinos. Yeah, that looks way better. Can now go for the normal rotation. <laughs> Formation are known to be real homebodies. They tend to avoid traveling as they find it cumbersome and unnecessary. I believe they have everything they need close by. 
Their impassive life has, led to, uh, has had a positive effect on the natural environment of Earth, but has also resulted in ignorance towards other capitals. Couch Potato Prime, here we go. Advances in formation architecture inspire a redesign of their capitals. The Celestial Dynasty is, is fine at the moment, but will change normally now, as the dinosaurs are no longer on the verge of any problem. So we'll come back to that. A depleted land region recovers even, and now we're really out of the problems. New Sage territory. Earth rotate around the sun. Now here we go. Growth in Tau City. Hygiene movement. Drowned scholars have discovered a direct correlation between cleanliness and the spread of disease. This leads to innovations in sanitation, including both houses, sewer systems and hygienic conditions, hospitals and food production. Civilization Pillar for an exorbitant 60 points. Hygiene becomes the highest virtue for the drowned. Proper personal grooming and a spotless home become pillars of personal health. They could be the spotless virgins. Regular development. The hygiene movement creates practice that prevent a lot of common diseases, allowing the drowned population to grow and prosper. For nothing. It's, it's free. It's really good. Of course, dead end. The drowned don't fully grasp the methodology of hygiene and only clean themselves superficially. Seeing no effect, they abandon the practice. You want this as a sit pillar? <laughs> All right. They're pure. Clean capitalist. Uh, for roleplay, it absolutely makes sense, right? Pure in every sense of the word. Yeah, the, the Shining Virgins, my goodness me. Shining Virgin Raptors. Drowned society became obsessed with cleanliness. Proper sanitation and hygiene standards slowed the spread of disease among the drowned. The Monk Dinosaurs. Does anyone still know Monk? I'm not sure. Drowned Divine Senator rises to power. Created a gigant gigantic stone steel on Tower City 3. See, that's that's what happens if you have too much sanitation and virginity. You create gigantic stone steels. Off with the head. <laughs> A stone steel in the nautical age. <laughs> hey there, ah, uh, man with a with a man with a name who must not be named. How is it going? It's going well. Even better when you are here. Let's see, the Rao regions. Power in Gleaser. Mounted hordes, the riders of the Rao, roam the wide plains of Gleaser Sea. They band together in great hordes, outrunning every army and trampling their enemies to the ground. Could prevent them. The riders can't work together and the hordes quickly disband. They could go regular. The mounted hordes turn the Rao into a force to be reckoned with or absolute power. The rider hordes dominate Rao society. Civilization is composed of mighty mounted warriors and those who serve them. Absolute power. <laughs> okay. I'm on board for absolute power. Genghis Khan, Cold War. Maybe it's a hot war, right? <laughs> I mean, if, you, if they're furry, so we have regular, we have two times... Uh, no, we have nothing two times. One times regular, one times absolute. Power. Power. Power to the... 
to the insects or whatever that is. That's not even an insect. I don't know what it is. Uh. Someone Bolin asks how how you dare. Okay. So let's let's go power. Super power. So the dumb horse dominates society. The nomadic Rao were organized in great horse. They rarely stayed long in one place and were masterful riding warriors. Hello Philip Solders and welcome back. Great power. Great power. Overseas Trading Company. Powerful territories established naval trading routes across the oceans of their home planet. A powerful stock company is funded as a result with an aim to forming a maritime trade monopoly across the most lucrative regions of Earth. Here we go, dinosaurs. We could go for a cultural ascent. A profit-oriented ocean-spanning monopoly would do a lot of harm to the weaker territories of the formation. The protests from thinkers and sovereigns, the company is dissolved and its assets used to fund academic ad academics overseas, cultural expansion. The reign of the powerful trading company is short but very profitable. Their financial success inspires an era of maritime exploitation and the establishment of countless trading posts all over Earth. So, cu cultural descent. For so, taking control of Earth's naval routes, the trading company becomes an independent faction with its own sovereign territory and trading navy. The old fa falling sage territories and competing companies build up war fleets to regain control of their sea regions. Oh my goodness me. Cultural descent. Ascent versus descent. Uh, we have two times ascent, one time, two times descent. Will they be decent? I roll the dice again. Four votes. I think I'll roll the dice now. One to ten is ascent, and the rest is decent. No, we have three times for decent. Back to the di Dino SSR. Okay. Fair and just empire. Descent, descent, descent. Here we go. It was a harsh age. Sage companies controlled the naval trading routes of Earth. Powerful warships protected maritime commerce and blocked their competitors from accessing the lucrative naval trade routes. Ooh. Time for a little bit more utopia here. With an epic poem. The formation die in a pandemic.
so I'm back. Let's see. We have a development event for the Maru. Extinction. <laughs> hey there. Hello, Extinction. <laughs> Polar Parasites. I've never had that. Wow. What is that? While exploring Tau City 3's polar regions, drowned expedition teams are infected by parasites trapped in the ice. The deadly spore-like structures replicate at astounding speeds, and the drowned have no natural defenses against them. If allowed to spread, the parasites could wipe out the entire Tau City 3 population. Close call. Aware of the per parasite's deadly nature, the infected polar dis explorers decide for the good of drowned society not to return home. Minimal survivors. The parasites multiply rapidly on Tau City 3, decimating the unprotected drowned before a cure is found. Complete extinction. The parasite enters the water supply and spreads through drowned cities. No cure is found. Yeah, they needed the vaccines now, right? But it's probably something you cannot have vaccines against. <gasps> I don't know about fungal infections. Can you have vaccines against fungal infections? Probably, right? But I'm not sure. An ancient organism. Close call. Chose to save the dinos. It's true. So we have close call, complete extinction, minimal survivors, minimal survivors. Two times minimal, two times close call. Okay, I'm going, going, uh, yeah, they, they discovered polar parasites, Anderson Cower. <laughs> <sighs> the dice of fate, the dice of fate, one to ten is close call, the rest, uh, we have, 16, which means minimal survivors. Yeah, and it's also decided. Minimal survivors. The parasites multiply rapidly on Tau City 3, decimating the unprotected drowned before a cure is found. They were not hygienic enough. They were just not hygienic enough, right? Here we go. Oof. Carried by an unwitting team of polar explorers, a deadly parasite propagated quickly in drowned hosts, inducing torturous death. Many drowned fell victim to the pathogen before a cure could be distributed. The few who survive tell lurid tales of horrors hidden inside the cold and stay close to home. Terrible. Terrible things wait in the cold. They discovered the mountains of madness and stayed there too long. The drowned warm assemblies now. They <laughs> discovered the warm, so. Two major drowned warm assemblies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 400k is really low. But what can you do if you discover a Lovecraftian disease in the. Yeah, in the, in the ice cold wastelands. We have a new warm assembly and we have a development event. Here we go. Injustice in Gleason. Rule of the elders. Traditionally, the elderly are highly respected in Gleason. Now that larger Rao regions are formed, the authority of the elders is put into law. The elders could be chosen as leaders not because of their wit or skill, simply because tradition demands it. We could prevent it. 
Respect for the elderly does not automatically give every Rao elder the right to rule over others. In general, leaders are being still being chosen based on merit, regular development. Some regions become fanatical gerontocracies with varying degrees of success. Others decide on auxiliary, auxiliary methods to choose their leaders. Or massive injustice, the entire Rao civilization adopts the rule of old leaders. The young do not enjoy any rights and have to follow the will of their elders, even if those elders are cruel or unfit to govern. Yeah, blame it on Cthulhu. Two times massive, one times regular. One times prevention. Two times massive. So massive is leading. Oh god. My kids are at war with each other. If this is an extinction event, I hope not. Hopefully not for the stream. But I will I will try to stream tonight. So a short pause is probably coming. I think it resolves itself. So let's see, we have regular, we have prevention. We have massive injustice. We have two times regular, so it's a toss up between regular and massive injustice. One to ten is regular, the rest will be massive injustice. Sixteen! We have massive injustice. Rao distributed governmental power purely based on age, leading to an unbalanced society where younger Rao had to endure the whims of the elder. Many were happy to exert these same privileges as they themselves became older, thus resulting in a vicious cycle, cycle of questionable ethics. Whew. It recovers though. Influential Rao leader rises to power. Yeah, they. I know they are alive. <laughs> I know, I know. They're very much alive, thankfully so. a new technological age. The Iron Age. Empires and trading states rise to power in the Iron Age. The metalworking Rao forged tools and developed the skills needed to create simple machinery, while expanding theological discourse could provide them with a sense of purpose and a moral compass. Organized religion also has the potential to bring about great atrocities. Wisdom, advancement or power. Wisdom. Monks transcribe knowledge in books that scholars are eager to get their hands on. If ever Raoiti looks to the heavens for guidance, advancement. Rao produced mighty blades by mining and smelting resources from deep within Gliese Sea, and new construction techniques accelerate their city building. Power. In epic dynasty wars, Rao iterates siege weaponry against the well-fortified castles of their foes. The dinos are actually not dying, I think. They're actually okay, but we can go for power, I have no problem. I think the dinos are fine, which is why I don't... I, I do it with a normal change I, I did. So we have three times power. They're gonna be really warlike. <laughs> we're organized in great hordes. They rarely stayed long in one place and were masterful riding. 
come back to them. Formation reached a cinch... Uh, yeah, here we go. Dinosaurs reached the industrial age. Here we go. The formations start to study electricity, steam power and machine manufacturing in the industrial age. Harnessing the power of radio waves might allow them to send signals into outer space. This, this civilization could accidentally eradicate itself as weapons development thrusts forth. Interference with the planet poses a serious threat to the ecosystem that has sustained formationity through the ages. Wisdom? This age sees an explosion in the formation potential for telecommunication via radio waves. Mass-produced goods, including new medicines, could improve the lives of many. Advancement. Again, hard work and ingenuity are needed to manage rapid urbanization without critically harming the planet. Train networks across vast swaths of Earth offer high-speed mobility for both freight and passengers. No, they don't arbitrarily reach a new age. They progress based on their population. Industrial age, yeah. Or they could design tanks, bomber planes, and simple automatic weapons for increased leverage against enemies. Naval warfare also gets industrial. Oh, okay, wisdom. I, I get you. We'll have the wise dinosaurs. So, um, so talking about the tech, if you you can choose like these tech points here, and as I get it, they just increase the speed as that that you progress to the next age as well as they get a little bit of speed instantly so it just makes your uh, civilization more scientific if you choose these uh, tech blobs and they also have direct progress from that industrial age coal crisis hit the formation hard their democracies assembled many battalions to protect the few fields what okay the coal crisis they also had a coal crisis, apparently. Yeah, we had through that. We were through that. But now I think we are set up well. Formation rifle soldiers lay down their simple rifles and abandon the art of war. Drowned warm assemblies. Consumption in Tau City. Whale hunting fleets. The hunting of big water beasts starts to become a major industry on Tau City 3. These majestic giant creatures, creatures are being hunted for food, medicine and prestige, risking them to become extinct. Oh no! We could prevent it. The drowned hunters have sorely underestimated the oceanic beasts who, in fear of their lives, band together to destroy the hunting ships that come for them. No sailors willing to sign up for these suicide missions again. My goodness me! <laughs> Regular development. Large fleets of beast hunters dwell the oceans to capture the majestic creatures, but because seafaring technology is not perfected yet, beasts in some areas of Tau City 3 are left unnoticed and unharmed. Yeah, the Maru is so effed. <laughs> Massive consumption. Sea creature hunt is very lucrative, and hunting fleets become bigger and more elaborate. Within a decade, every large water beast on Tau City 3 has been killed. We have regular or massive. Regular, regular or prevent or massive. <laughs> I mean from the points, if you go for gameplay, if you want to give them a chance then, or give us a good chance then, from the points, I think regular development is the best choice. How do they find them when they are blind? Mm, good question. It's probably maybe they smell them, I don't know. Maybe they have uh, ultrasonic view or something like that.
echolocation. Yeah, there's all kinds of strange things. Yeah, yeah, you dislike they're killing a new a whole species. So, um, so we have two times regular. Mm. Two times massive. Oh, yeah, more regular. More regulars. Hey there, the sloth slow. Welcome here. So we have three times regular now. Regular hunting fleets. Here we go. Many healing qualities have been attributed to the large oceanic beasts. They have been honored with poems, and the hunters who witnessed them in their natural habitat before killing them spoke of their exceptional strength, resilience and health. It said some of them still live deep, deep in the seas. Divine Senator raises, rises to power. Arctic region should never be explored. We don't know what horrors we might find here. Yeah. <laughs> and another gigantic stone steel in the nautical age. Another senator. A mountain capital is destroyed by a massive flood. Drowned musketeers lay down their gunpowder muskets and abandon the art of war. We should try to get them growing, right? But Rao domains have, have an extinction event. Foul pestilence triggered by vermin carrying invisibly small disease agents. The cities of the Rao become breeding grounds for a terrible plague. The illness spreads over the whole planet while trading routes is highly contagious and kills its hosts slowly enough to create a global pandemic. Close call, very cheap. After the first outbreaks, the Arau isolate infected cities, adapt their hygiene habits and exterminate deadly vermin to stop the spread of the illness. Minimal survivors, five million lives lost. The plague decimates the population, most major cities. Only a small fraction of the Rao develop an immunity to it. Or we could let them go extinct and try to get the others. <laughs> Society falls apart as the pestilence quickly infects and kills every last Rao. We have close call, or minimal survivors so far, two times. Hey, welcome back, Silent Slow. Silent Snow. Ah. <laughs> we have two times close call, one times minimal survivors. Three times close call. Yeah, I think it's a close call for now. Close call. The Rao were very clean and strict about vermin control after their collective memory was stained with anguish and fear, a deadly plague in the Iron Age. I hear the screams of the damned from afar. Battle over an important city by an army, it's won by an army of sword fighters. Uh, here we go. Establish a new domain. Cruising. They mourn the death of a beloved sovereign. And now, we have a development event for the dinos. Sol is sending signals into space. Formation jazz music. They are the jazz ones. A unique musical style emerges on Earth.
Characterized by conceptual boundary shattering and improvisation, jazz paints harmonies with more than just the primary colors, especially mood indigo. Open to intuition, instead of following rules, musicians of this genre boldly express their spiritual energy with cathartic squeedly bebops and hidder hidderhoes. These soulful vibes may even influence alien musical theater someday. Jazz hands. Yeah, I, I have to take care of the other crisis, so this will be the last decision for now, and I'll try to come back tonight with another stream. So in a few hours, let's calculate, uh, probably four to five hours, then I'll try to get back to it. But I can never say it exactly. So we have a signal boost, which is 50 points. We can have silence, which brings us 12 points. So we have a regular signal, which costs us nothing. The intercultural blending of traditions and styles in jazz music weaves together different groups' formation in the harmonious groove. Space is the place for futuristic sound of ancient history. Regular signal, born out of minority ethnic communities, jazz music is re-recorded by mainstream artists. But commercial retellings of other culture stories are usually a bit sharp on the blue notes. It don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing. Or silence, with its jarring dissonant compositions and association with illicit activities and exclusive side street clubs, jazz music is prohibited on the airwaves. Have jazz dinos twice? No, once. And silence twice? Yeah, it sounds a bit like my boys are at war with each other at the moment. <laughs> so silence, silence, silence. Yeah, it's 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 a little bit early for that. It's a little bit early for that. They they won't be able to contact anyone for now. And it also gives a very low radius. So we go for silence. The wild, unfettered spirit of jazz came came as a shock to many. And religious fundamentalists on earth condemned it as diabolical music. While the celebrated art form lived on through big bands and little pianos in underground clubs and private homes, jazz was banned from the radio in the industrial age, and few recordings of this genre still exist. Yeah, my boys are at war with each other, so <laughs> thank you for watching, and happy gaming to you. We'll see each other. Maybe tonight. I hope so. Have a great time until then and happy gaming. This is Wonder Khan signing out. See you soon. Thank you for being here.